Hi everyone, it is Monday. It's January 20th, 2020, and I hope everyone's having a beautiful day in the Lord. I'm going to continue on my teaching about the Apostle Paul. Um, there is a playlist that I created on my YouTube channel called Unraveling Paul. Um, I recommend that if you haven't watched the videos that are in that playlist that you go in there at your leisure and at least I think there's only maybe three in there so far but at least you have some background of what I've already put out but today I'm going to talk about the um, the New Testament how it started and uh, a few other things that you may find very interesting First, I would like to start off with uh, telling you about um, a bishop that lived at the time of the first church. As you know, the, the first church was made up of all Jewish people. And um, there was a bishop called Marcion. Now, Marcion, his core belief system was that he, he believed that the, the God of the Old Testament was not the same as the God of the New Testament, that Jesus represented a different God, a much kinder God, um, and the God of the Old Testament was a harsh God, basically that he was evil and Jesus represented a good God. It was two separate gods in his theology. And this man had great influence um, at the time when the New Testament was evolving and being created. I just want to give you a brief background on Marcion before I go on with the rest of this uh, Bible teaching. Um, this is called Marcion and the Marcionites. At the end of July 144 CE, a hearing took place before the clergy of the Christian congregations in Rome. Marcion, the son of the Bishop of Sinope, which is a seaport of Pontus along the Black Sea, who had become a wealthy ship owner, he stood before the presbyters to expound his teachings in order to win others to his point of view. For some years, he had been a member of one of the Roman churches and had proved the sincerity of his faith by making relatively large contributions. So he was a wealthy man and he donated very handsomely to that first church. No doubt he was a respected member of the Christian community. But what he now expounded to the presbyters uh, was so monstrous that they were utterly shocked. The hearing ended in a harsh rejection of Marcion's views. He was formally excommunicated and his largest, largest say of money was returned. So it had to be something really, really offensive that he came out with in order for the church to return his contributions and excommunicate him from the church, the early church. From this time forward, Marcion went his own way, energetically uh, propagating a strange kind of Christianity that took root throughout large sections of the Roman Empire. And by the end of the second century, it had become a very, very serious threat to the mainstream Christian church. In each city of any importance, the Marcionites set up their church to defy the Christian one. So everywhere there was a Christian church, these Marcionites set up one to go against everything that they preached. Marcion only wrote a single work called Antithesis, which are contradictions, in which he set forth his ideas. 
since it has not been pres preserved, we must be content with deducing its contents from notices contained in the writings of Marcion's opponents. Marcion was hated by everyone. Okay, so the only way we can look into Marcion's work was to turn to the people who hated him to see what they wrote about him. One of his opponents particularly was Tertullian. And Tertullian's five volumes that were written and published against Marcion. They were called Adversus Marciconium. The main point of Marcion's teaching was the rejection of the Old Testament and a distinction between the supreme God of goodness and an inferior God of justice. Who was the creator and God of the Jews? He regarded Christ as the messenger of the supreme God. So Marcion hated the Jews. He, hate, he despised the Jews. Okay, and he made declarations that the Jews, the God of the Bible, the Jewish God uh, of, the, of the Old Testament Bible was an evil God. And the God that Jesus represented was the uh, universal God of goodness. Marcion therefore rejected the entire Old Testament. He accepted the following Christian writings in this particular order. And I'm gonna read them to you. The Gospel according to Luke, Galatians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Romans, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Ephesians, which Marcion called the Laodiceans, Colossians, Philemon, and Philippians. But only after pruning and editorial adjustment. In his opinion, the 12 apostles misunderstood the teaching of Christ and holding him to be the Messiah of the Jewish God falsified his words from that particular standpoint. Passages that Marcion could uh, regard only as Judaizing interpolations that had been smuggled into the text by biased editors. See, this was his narrative that he assumed and he put his own narrative into his writings. And it had to be removed so the authentic text of the gospel and the apostle could once again be available. After these changes, the gospel according to Luke became the Evangelicon and the 10 Pauline letters, the Apostoclon. Marcion rejected the following Christian writings, the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to John. Marcion's canon accelerated the process of fixing the church's canon which had already begun in the first half of the second century. It was in opposition to Marcion's criticism that the church first became fully conscious of its inheritance of apostolic writings. Um, Marcion forced more orthodox Christians to examine their own presuppositions and to state more clearly what they already believed. Marcion and the Gospel according to Luke, Marcion believed that there is one true Gospel which had been corrupted into many versions. He explained the corruption on the basis of Galatians, in which Paul emphasized that it was, there's only one Gospel in Galatians 1, 8 to 10, and states that false brethren are attempting to turn believers from this Gospel in one, uh, Galatians 1, 6 and 7. So that's where you get the writings that if someone is to preach another gospel, they ought to be accursed. That is the root where that came from. Of the gospels 
that were current among the churches, the only one that Marcion felt he could trust was the gospel according to Luke. We cannot say with certainty why he had confidence in this gospel, but perhaps the reason was that he uh, regarded the author Luke as a disciple of Paul and believed him to be more faithful to tradition than the other evangelists. In any case, this was for Marcion, the gospel, without identification of its human author, a deficiency for which Tertullian castigates Marcion. Passages that Marcion could regard only as Judaizing interpolations that had been smuggled into the text by biased editors had to be removed so the authentic text of gospel, which he called Evangel Evangelicon, could once again be available. With thorough going heedlessness of the consequences, Marcion undertook to expunge everything from the text of Luke, which echoed or otherwise implied a point of contact with the Old Testament. Since Jesus, according to Marcion, had only the appearance of being human, he could not have been born of a woman. Therefore, Marcion omitted most of the first four chapters of Luke. In the last chapters, the omissions are rather more numerous than the first. The resurrection of Jesus is passed over in silence. Marcion and the Galatians. Marcion deemed Galatians the most important of Paul's epistles. He explained the corruption of the true gospel on the basis of the Galatians in which Paul states that false brethren are attempting to turn believers from the gospel. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. That is spoken about in Galatians 1, 6, and 7. The emphasis that there is only one gospel, you see? The emphasis there is put on just one gospel instead of the others. That's how he backed up that uh, the gospel of grace is the only gospel, the true gospel, see? But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say again, if any man preach another gospel unto you that he, that ye have received, let him be accursed. Galatians 1, 8 to 10. But Marcion removed whatever he judged was interpolations, that is, anything that did not agree with his understanding of what Paul should have written. For example, Galatians 3, 16, 4 and 6 was deleted because of its reference to Abraham and its descendants. Marcion placed Galatians first in his canon of epistles, the Apostolon. Marcion was convinced that among the early apostolic leaders by uh, leaders, only Paul understood the significance of Jesus Christ as the messenger of the Supreme God. He accepted as authoritative these 10 epistles. Gal Galatians, that was his favorite book, by the way. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Romans, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon, and Philippians. But Marcion removed whatever he judged was interpolations, that is, anything that he did not agree with, his understanding of what Paul should have written. And that's a little bit about Marcion.